All right, today we're going to talk about the uh, Starfire 6000 receiver and uh, some stuff that you can go in and look at, check on your activation status, and then we're going to touch a little bit about the RTK. So from your Gen 4 display, there's a couple different ways you can get to that Starfire receiver. One way is to hit up top next to your time, and then you can also see your signal level right there as well. If you hit that box, the first thing that's going to pop up is your Starfire receiver. You can access them from right there. Or if you hit your ISO VT button down at the bottom, you can come there, hit the arrow with the boxes pointing up, and your Starfire receiver is going to be right there as well. So we'll just start in on here. Uh, the first tab that you're going to see is the Info tab. This is going to give you the position mode that the receiver is currently in, and it's going to give you your accuracy levels over here on the right. It's also going to give you some pitch and roll angle. That's going to be coming off of your TCM inside the receiver and your uh, yaw rate down here. This is giving you your longitude and latitude at the time. Up at the top, we've got several different icons. One of them is the setup. This is where you're gonna go to tell it whether you want SF1, SF3, or RTK corrections. With an RTK radio enabled, that's going to be grayed out. You cannot change that from RTK. If you are running RTK, you want to have this enable RTK Xbox. What that's going to allow the receiver to do is continue with RTK signal even if it loses sight of a tower. Um, down here on the mounting direction, that's where you can tell the receiver whether it's mounted forward or backwards, and then you can input your Starfire receiver height and your four aft inches right here. On all R series tractors, this is all going to be pre populated, and S series combines, this will all be pre populated as well for you. Hours on after shutdown, that's going to be how, how long the receiver stays on and pulling signal after you shut the key off. So if you're going to be leaving for a couple hours, uh, you can have that stay on. That way when you get back to the tractor, it's got full signal and it's ready to go. Down here is your um, TCM calibration, which we'll cover in another video, but this is where you would go to do that uh, calibration. Under your activations tab, this is going to tell you uh, what activations are currently on this receiver. So this one here that we're looking at, it has SF1, SF3, and RTK. All are activated. Um, down here, it tells you your subscription status. So if you were running an SF3 receiver, you would have an SF3 subscription right here, and it would tell you the end date of that subscription. Now, if you're getting ready to start planting or harvesting and you want to activate your SF3 subscription, this is the page that you need to go to to see where your subscription status is. If you do not have a current subscription, that's where you're going to call the Sloan Implement uh, Call Center or support line. The information that they will need is the Starfire receiver serial number, which is displayed right here at the bottom of this section. You give that number to the representative and he's going to um, give you a code that you can input by hitting this box right here. Hit the enter and they will provide you with a um, code that you type into these three boxes right here. After you hit accept, your SF3 license will pop up and it, will, it should have an end date whether that be three months, six months, or a year from whichever date you activated. Down here at the bottom you do have some grace periods if you want to try SF3 out or if something goes wrong and you have to swap receivers and you need SF3 you can use one of those grace periods but you are limited to three grace periods per receiver. Next one over is our serial port tab. This is going to be for outputs if you're hooking this receiver to an off-brand piece of equipment, uh, maybe a tile plow, something like that. The manufacturer of that equipment should have all of this information and where this needs to be changed. Um, a, lot of, a lot of companies are going to want a different baud rate and a different output rate. And then depending on what application you're using, you may have to put a check mark in these boxes down here to get that receiver to output the right signals for that third party software to work. But once again, check with your third party operator's manual, they'll lay that out pretty good there for you. So over on the right. If we hit our receiver icon, that just brings us right back to our Starfire main page. If you do have an RTK ready receiver, you will have this icon pop up. And this is where you're going to go in and actually configure the RTK network. So when you're changing from RTK bases, you're going to come in and hit this configure button. Operating mode, we're going to want to be vehicle unless we're setting this receiver up for a base, but for our purposes today, we're going to leave it as vehicle. That way this receiver will be receiving the signal and not transmitting. 
So we're going to input a network ID and a radio frequency, and that can be found on the Sloan Implement app. Um, if you're using Sloan Implements towers, uh, there, there's a really nice page on our app that lays out all our towers and all of our numbers. One thing to keep in mind, um, before season, you need to kind of think about which areas you're going to be in and uh, which towers you're going to want to run off of and make sure that you are in fact unlocked for those towers. That's as simple as calling Sloan Implement and having them unlock those towers for you. But then you can plug in your network ID and your frequency and that will configure that radio for that RTK tower. Once you configure, it's going to bring you back to this page and this is going to kind of give you some base station data right here. So right now our status of our base is okay. It's looking at 18 satellites. Well, we are currently 13.92 miles from the base that we have selected. But the big one that you're going to be looking for down here is this percent radio data received. We want to see that pretty high. If that starts to drop off, that's a good indication that you're about ready to lose signal with that tower. So this is uh, one good piece of information to look at when you're trying to diagnose RTK issues, is, is if you are in fact uh, getting percent data of radio received. The other icons we have over here are the uh, sky uh, plot. This is going to show you which satellites the receiver is actually tracking at the moment and what their status is. Those should all say either RT OK SF1, OK SF3, or OK RTK, depending on which signal level you are pulling. The next icon down is the um, diagnostics button. This will give you your hardware and your software versions. So. Um, typically we're looking at this software version number right here to make sure that this is the most up-to-date version and we'll explain that in another video on how to actually update your receiver but this is where you can come in and look to see what software you currently have. The icons across the top will give you some bar graph information of over time how well that receiver has in fact pulled signal and one thing to note here, this will also give you your serial number right here, so there's a couple different places where you can see that information, but once again, we will need that information to get you a subscription um, unlocked under our activations tab. So that pretty much covers the Starfire receiver. If uh, any questions come up, feel free to contact your local Sloan Implement dealer, and um, thank you for watching this video.